Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 30th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, I already mentioned some of the privacy concerns and how some of these COVID-19 tracing applications are addressing them. I summarized some of this in a post today with links to all of the different standards, proposed standards to be used for COVID-19 tracing. So if you're interested in sort of a deep dive on it, you can refer to the documentation for these individual standards. Also, Apple today made available a new beta of its iOS operating system. They call it now 13.5. And this beta does include an early implementation of the COVID-19 tracing API. Again, the iOS and the Android, uh, they'll only include an API to facilitate the tracing. The actual application that takes advantage of the API will then be provided by various health authorities around the world. And Google released a security patch for Google Chrome fixes to use after free vulnerabilities that of course could potentially be used for code execution. However, the notes that Google has published so far are very sparse, so no real sort of rating of it uh, in the notes, other than that at least the first one of the flaws received a $10,000 bug bounty. This of course now also affects Microsoft Edge, which is based on Chrome, Microsoft released a corresponding patch earlier today. And Microsoft released updates to several Sys internal tools, in particular Sysmon. Sysmon is now version 11. And one interesting new feature they added is something they're calling delete monitoring or file delete monitoring. Now, what this does is it not only logs if a file is being deleted, it also may automatically save a copy of that file. The idea behind this is that attackers often will delete the tools they're using to attack a system after they're done using a particular tool. And using this feature, it may be possible to capture some of these attack tools that the attacker intended to delete. And yes, you may say that it may be possible to recover deleted files, but well, there's a may attached to that statement and it depends on whether or not you're lucky as an instant responder here or whether the attacker was lazy enough to not properly delete the file. With this sysinternals feature, it should be possible to always recover this deleted file. And if you are worried that you'll be just sort of flooded with benign files that are being deleted here by users, well, you can actually filter these events so you can exclude certain files from being reported as being deleted. And there's also the inverse where you will only monitor certain files and only get alerts if those files are deleted. And for a change, we got a little bit of good news from the ransomware front. Uh, if you have been the victim of the Shade ransomware, well, uh, there's some good news for you. The Shade ransomware gang has stopped operating and they did us all a favor in releasing all the decryption keys that they had, which were about 750 thousands of them. This malware is also known as Troll Dash and Encoder 858. The data was published on GitHub and the application to decrypt the data was published as well. So you got everything here to get your files back. As usual, be careful with random files like this being posted on GitHub. They could be malicious so far. I haven't seen any indications of this. This was released a couple days ago. And uh, at this point, I haven't seen anybody claim that the decryptor or anything posted in this GitHub repository should be considered malicious. And talking about downloading random software from GitHub, well, uh, Black Hat students, often also security researchers that are trying to find the latest and greatest exploit that is often posted on GitHub. Well, I've do, done that several times myself in researching some vulnerability. 
Curtis Prassel wanted to learn a little bit more about how this entire process works and he published Honeysploit. Honeysploit was and is a GitHub repository that advertises exploits for various uh, cutting edge vulnerabilities and he just checked basically what people were doing with uh, these uh, tools, essentially sort of pretended to give them a remote shell and then was just uh, logging the commands that they executed. Very similar to sort of what Cowrie, for example, does with SH and Telnet. Now, pretty interesting write-up that he had here. Of course, some people may consider the ethics of this a little bit questionable. Personally, I don't really feel that he did any damage here and got some interesting results. And you should definitely be careful with what you are downloading from various websites. And I think a pretty good lesson taught here. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please let your friends know about it, social media, or leave a good review on any podcast platform that you are using to listen to this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.